Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's wombs. In you, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored in you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God, of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God, you will not despise. Favor Zion with your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the appointed sacrifices and burnt and whole offerings. Then young bulls shall be offered up on your altar.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full of pardon and forgiveness, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first reading comes from the book of Joel, chapter 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming near. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their likes has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians, chapters 5 and into 6. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain, for he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are all well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. according to Matthew. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. 
And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, our source of God's grace and forgiveness. Amen. Yesterday, I finished leading a grief seminar with some, some courageous people in this congregation. Courageous folks who have experienced deep and painful loss in their life. Loss of longtime spouses, beloved siblings, and even children. They've been navigating the realities of losing someone they love suddenly, unexpectedly, as well as a company one diagnosed with an incurable condition. They are courageous because they're willing to acknowledge and admit that no matter how good things appear on the outside to others, they are broken. Their heart still hurts. Tears still fall. And there is comfort and strength found when they know God is with them and others can empathize with them. They are able to testify to the truth. Grief is a normal emotional response to significant loss. It is a composite of powerful emotions assailing us whenever we lose someone or something. It can be avoided, though at a very high cost to the one who refuses it. We live in a culture that works very, very hard to help you and me deny the reality of death. And the high cost of bearing grief dressed in putting on a stiff upper lip or pulling oneself up by our own bootstraps. Showing signs of vulnerability are an admission of weakness, which we fear plenty of people are willing to exploit. Ash Wednesday is a moment in our yearly calendar, in our church calendar, when those of us who gather take a moment in this life that we are living to own up to the truth that often only the experiences of deep loss provoke. We are broken. We are not fine. We are mortal. We are finite. The ritual of receiving ashes, ashes on our forehead is not for showing and telling which Jesus commends, uh, condemns in our reading from Matthew, it is a means of acknowledging we are human and we're not God. Ashes are an expression of utter grief, sorrow, or remorse for failing to remember who we are and who God is. Ashes represent our finiteness and our ultimate powerlessness over death. Ashes are a form of dust that link us to the truth of which the psalmist sang, Dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Ashes stand for wasted effort, as ashes are often the residue of something burned. Ashes are a form of dirt, 
bearing witness to our need for God's cleansing and renewal. As we just passed the anniversary of Russia's unprovoked attack on the nation of Ukraine, as the death toll continues to rise in Syria and Turkey from the rupture of tectonic plates far below the ground, and across this country, formerly green and lush forests were gray and black from raging wildfires. Ash fills the air. Ash fills the air around this globe. The words of the prophet Joel capture a similar time 2,500 years ago as a swath of locusts Locusts darken the sky, block out the sun and the moon, and ravages the fledgling crop that is essential for daily life. Joel calls the people to repent, to return to the Lord, to remember who God is and whose they are. Joel calls the people to practice the disciplines that have formally shaped the people of God into a community that offers blessing to others while trusting in the true nature of God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents and, and relents from punishing. We maybe are not dreading the invasion of locusts tonight, or even fearing the coming day of the Lord in judgment upon us. But we find ourselves in this place at this time daring to acknowledge some truth. Some truth about the human condition and our need to confess and trust in a God who is for us, who is with us, who loves us. Retired United Methodist minister Steve Garnis Holmes offers an imaginative approach to the journey that we start this night marked with ashes. Lent. Lent is a time when we go downstairs, down into the basement of our souls, into the dark, dingy, dirty places, and clear out the junk we need to get rid of. In Lent, we don't need to beat ourselves up. We need to lighten our load. Bag up those fears and desires that are leaking all over everything. Take our guilt and shame out to the curb. It's not easy to lay our hands on broken things, to look deep into the gummed up works. That's why Jesus shines with his light, shines so we can see our way down into the dark, see to lift up the junk and hand it over so he can haul it out into the light of the dumpster. The light, shine, the light Jesus shines is good with dark places. So we know even from the deepest hole down there we'll come out. The light will lead us. We'll be okay. Mucking around down there, we get dirty. And we come up with grime on our hands and ashes on our foreheads for everybody to see. But we're free. We're free of all that blame and disappointment and the darkest, deepest cellar hole becomes an empty tomb. On this Ash Wednesday, we are invited by Jesus in his ongoing Sermon on the Mount to practice our spiritual disciplines with a desire to grow closer to the one who made us and formed us in our mother's womb, who claims each and every one of us and calls us beloved children through the promise of baptism, and who desires we are forgiven, who declares we are forgiven over and over again when we come up short, miss the mark, or let our self-interests or others' interests get in the way of God's interests by feeding our hungry spirit with a broken body and poured out blood. May these 40 days ahead of us be a gift and a means to strengthen us 
as we give alms or offerings of something that is undeniably ours for which we've worked really hard to serve and support a neighbor or even an enemy. As we invest daily time in prayer, receiving what God wants us to hear and act upon it. And as we fast from some aspect of our life, which allows us to put our worldly and bodily needs in perspective to our dependency on God. May these 40 days not be a show or a parade for others to see, but a time of private retreat in secret to spend time with our God who sees in secret. May these 40 days be seen as a gift and not a burden to endure so that our hearts and minds are truly ready, ready and prepared for the journey to Jesus' cross and the Easter hope that awaits us all. Amen. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another, most holy and merciful God. We confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, 
in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes, by a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only be the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all, in, and all of creation. Lord, in your mercy, I'm sorry, hear us, O oh God. For the renewal of your church, accompany us throughout our Lenten pilgrimage. Create in us clean hearts and renew all the baptized to declare your praise. Hear us, O oh God. For the renewal of your creation, we give thanks for the rains and we pray for rain to fall on the parched places and bring healing to your land. Hear us, O oh God. For the renewing of nations, O oh God, give voice to those on the margins and resolve to world leaders who seek to protect those most vulnerable. Hear us, O oh God. For the renewing of your people, respond to those who cry out to you in secret or in seclusion. Equip us with compassion to care for those who experience homelessness, food insecurity, economic hardship, and illness. Hear us, O oh God. Renew this congregation. Inspire our faith formation ministries and those who teach and lead. Invigorate us with lifelong curiosity and wonder as we grow as your disciples. Hear us, O oh God. For nations who are suffering in a time of war, and nations that are suffering in natural disasters. Bring hope. Hear us, O oh God. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is ready. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Amen.
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 